Hi everyone, my name is Carol and this is my YouTube channel about cinema guitar would cry. Today we continue talking about cinema and fetishism and in previous part we found out the relevance of the topic for film studies and briefly explored the history of the term fetishism. In order to make possible further discussions of manifestation forms of fetishism in cinematography, it's fair to give a brief overview of the functions and characteristics of fetish as a phenomenon. By the end of the video you will be able to answer why cinema as an embodiment of all forms of art becomes a phenomenon of a specific concern when we talk about fetishization. The first and one of the most significant characteristics of fetish is the indestructible materiality of it, which is primarily found in African trinkets and which has a very similar to Christian relics structure. Objects that were either attributes belong to saints, the prophet and God, or were connected with the events important for the Christian culture. For the faithful, the relics were endowed with supernatural abilities, for example, to heal a sick, and became objects for veneration, fetishes without which one cannot get closer to God. Moreover, the Christian cult of the image of God, in which the image and the Godhead are identical, leads us to the following characteristic of the fetish as a multi-component product, which is able to combine and organize different heterogeneous elements. Moreover, these components, which are connected through a fetish into a single entity, are not just material fragments, but also include desires, beliefs and narrative structures being a part of specific social practices. So these elements are simultaneously fixated on a fetish and are intensified by a fetish, so that it gives it force to repeat and embody various fundamental practices. Elaborating upon this point, Marx used the term fetishism as an indicator for the ability of a specific historical institution to fix personal consciousness in objective illusion and in the first volume of Capital shows that political economy cannot be built without commodity fetishism, which is an alienated form of emotional connection with the object of desire. According to Marx, fetishism is indeed an absurdity, an illusion of social consciousness, so long as we understand by this not a subjective illusion born of individual consciousness, but an objective or transcendental illusion born out of the conditions of social consciousness in the course of its actualization. It becomes evident in the situation of regular exchanges and transactions on the genuine cost when the dependence of social value on certain institutional systems that assign value to material things can be seen. This becomes especially apparent when we talk about exchanging European trinkets for really valuable things. So, fetish is considered as a material object that serves as something that affects the redefinition of values and at the same time is located at the point where objective institutional systems are personified by individuals. This effect of fetishism has found expression in the next characteristic of a fetish as a subordination of the human body to some materialistic objects, which although are separated from the body, as they are often made to be worn on it, still have power for control as if they were natural parts of the body. In psychoanalysis, this topic was developed as a symbolization of the sexualized human body fixed in relation to certain material entities. Sexual fetishism, as soon as conceptualized by Alfred Binet and Richard von Kraft Ebbing, was considered as a model for perversions, and a fetish object was acquainted with objects of worship of Christian relics. Later, a general growing interest to the study of fetishism, sexologists and psychoanalysists, in particular Sigmund Freud, based on religious and ethnographic studies, began to embed the concept of fetishism in the theory of sexuality, so that fetishism became a fundamental concept for analyzing an erotic subject and was described in two Freud's books, three essays on the theory of sexuality and fetishism. There, Fetishism refers to a situation of traumatic fixation on a specific intense experience and the ability of a single person to structure desire. The most important part of the concept lies in the mechanisms of how traumatic fixation becomes a source of attraction and desire in the form of fetish, 
which helps to cope with castration anxiety. Well, I should be back from your face and pinned at the neck. I told her that. I told you that. We tried it. It just didn't seem to suit me. Please, Judy. Foregoing shows that fetish is a material object that, by its presence, hides an actual object of a person's desire, thereby simultaneously highlighting it, so that satisfaction becomes incomprehensible without the presence of the fetish, since the fetish captures desire in itself, strengthens it, and hence make it possible for experiencing pleasure. At the same time, the endowment of objects with fetishistic characteristics, I mean fetishization, as I can see, can be undertaken at two major levels. Psychodynamic level, according to Freud, as a way for an individual to cope with castration anxiety, and social level, when value to some objects, which in reality don't have this kind of value, constitutes in the society. But these two phenomena have one main thing in common. Both are not evidently represented in the culture, they are not visible, but still are woven into social structures. That is what Laura Mulvey called repression of the mother's body and repression of labor power as a source of value in her book Fetishism and Curiosity. Art exists in this logic too, as it on the one hand is a fetish and on the other acts within the framework specified by the fetishism and reproduces and represents fetishism in society. That is why art as fetishism in modernist culture started to be a universal model of creativity embodying the social unconscious and imagined through the cult of stars, fashion, images, specific forms of behavior, etc. Art could become universally desired, understandable for masses, and thereby could be integrated into the commodity logic of, logic of capitalism only thanks to its fetishistic properties. According to Christian Metz, cinema is a kind of legitimized guilty pleasure which includes successive images providing access to forbidden desire. Cinema as an institution affirms the possibility to legitimate access to watching films. That is to say, cinema as an institution is a fetish through which it's only possible to access desire. Therefore, it's important to consider the fetishizing characteristics of cinema in its complex. That is why the work on defetishization should be carried out at all of these levels of fetishization. So, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, not to miss the next video about theoretical approaches to the analysis of cinematic fetishism in film theory. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!